Status quo orders. This is a series on Oregon family law. My name is Ray Cherba. I am a licensed attorney in the state of Oregon, and I litigate family law cases for the Center for Nonprofit Legal Services. Today, we're talking about status quo orders, and I wanted to do this video because status quo orders are a really good tool in Oregon family cases, but not a lot of people know about them. So, okay, so the term status quo means as it is right now, and that's what a status quo order does. It locks things in regards to the children as they are right now. Status quo orders have been available in family law cases for a long time because um, what used to happen back in the day before they had status quo orders is somebody would get served a family case and they would be like, oh, I see how it's going to be. Well, if you're going to do this, I'll just take the kids and go to my mom's house two states away and you'll never see them again. And the courts got tired of that pretty quick. So they uh, came up with status quo orders as a way to stop that kind of thing. All right, so a status quo order keeps everything related to the child as it has been for the last three months prior to the time the request for the status quo order was filed. That is the look back period. This, there are several ways to get a status quo order in Oregon. This is one of the statutes, 107097. And you can see here the things that a status quo order does in regards to the child. This is, uh, if you get a status quo order, this is what your order might look like. This is the same language right here, but this is in the form of an order. Okay, so let's talk about the three ways you can get a status quo order. One is, uh, I just showed you 107097, and that, in my opinion, is the best way to do it. Because if you get a status quo order under 097, you do not need a hearing. You could, If you just file that paperwork when you file your petition, the judge is authorized by statute to, to just sign that status quo order uh, with no hearing. So that is a great way to get a status quo order, but you have to file the motion in order for status quo with the petition. Now, you can get a status quo order after you file the petition under 107095, and a lot of people do this because they don't know how easy it is to get a status quo order with 97, so they file their petition, they don't file a status quo order, and then after the case begins unfolding, they realize, hey, I need a status quo order to keep my case cool. And then they have to go under 9-5. And if you go under 9-5, you have to set a hearing. You have to go to court. It's kind of a bigger deal. And the last way to get a status quo order is 107138. That is if you already have a general judgment. So you have an older case. You have a parenting plan in place. You're filing to modify that parenting plan. You can get a status quo order just to keep things cool during the modification to make sure nobody does anything silly. Okay, so let's talk about some common reasons a status quo order is needed. Uh, you're getting ready to file a petition. You know the other side is going to freak out when they get the petition. You don't want them to hide the child or run away with the child. Get a status quo order. If you have a case and the other side starts threatening to keep the child from you, get a status quo order. And then the last one I have here is prevent the other side from going back to what the paper says. And what I'm talking about here is I see frequently uh, cases where the parties are doing a parenting plan that does not reflect the court order. So maybe the court order says 50-50, but after they got that court order, one party goes to the other and says, hey, you know, 50-50 is really too much for me. I just want to do every other weekend. And the other party agrees. And so now they're doing what that that party's doing every other weekend. That's not really fair to the other party who has the child pretty much all the time, but has a child support order based on 50-50. And the court order does not reflect the every other weekend arrangement. So maybe that party that has a child files a modification. And when they serve it, the every other weekend party says, oh, I see what you're doing. You're going to modify our case. You're going to make me pay more child support and you're going to make the court order say I only have every other weekend. Well, guess what? We're going to go back to what the paper says right now. And if 
you have a status quo order, you can prevent that. You can lock in the schedule that's been going on for the last three months and, and you can, you can, you can prevent that. Now, status quo orders are, are actually more flexible than that. I have on a couple of occasions, I have used status quo hearings to bring children back from other states where they have been moved to illegally. I have also had children return to their rightful schools. So whatever it is, if somebody's doing something against the court order, consider a status quo to get things back to normal. Okay, so where can you get a status quo order form? Well, maybe if you know anything about Oregon family law, you know that Oregon has a great forms center. There's tons of family law forms there. Here are the links. You can also see them in the description below. I will tell you that if you go to the form center, uh, there are two status quo orders there. One is in the prejudgment application and one's in the post order application. If you use the one in the prejudgment application, you can use that uh, for a status quo order that is submitted with the petition, or you can use it for a status quo order that is submitted after the petition. So 107.097 or 107.095, it works for both of them. Okay, that's pretty much what we have for you. Just some final thoughts. Uh, the status quo order, like I said, it locks in whatever's been going on for the last three months. If there's a dispute about that, or if the plan has changed in the last three months, then just set a hearing. Go to court, have the judge uh, settle that for you guys. And um, if you get a status quo order with your petition, which is recommended, one of the nice things that you can do is... You know, you submit the petition status quo order together. That status quo order gets signed right away. Now, before the other side even knows that you filed a case, you have a signed status quo order. So when you have the sheriff or whoever your server is serve the other side with the petition, also serve the signed status quo order. So the other side knows right away, oh, okay, there's a, a signed status quo order. If I do anything stupid, I'm going to be breaking a status quo order, and that's not really what I want to be doing. So that might help keep your case cool. Okay? Thanks very much for watching. Good luck in your case, and I will see you in court.